Welcome back to Stace on Wheels. I decided not to get Trixie's cab sandblasted and that means that the restoration of the one tonner cab will be completely manual and what I'm going to start with is the floor pan and getting that treated with KBS before moving on to anything else. How big is this Huntsman? That is the biggest one I've ever seen, for sure. And don't worry, they're not venomous. There are probably four reasons at least why I'm not getting the cab sandblasted. And the first one is that all the stories that I've heard about media blasting, uh, a lot of them, um, people warned about how the action of the, that physical blasting can stretch the panels, not, not just heat, even if you avoid heat. Um, still the panels apparently can be stretched a little with uh, the physical impact of the media. The second reason is that a lot of that media blasting um, bits and pieces, particularly sand, uh, can get trapped in all the little nooks and crannies and you'll never get it out and it'll, it'll be there. The third reason is that it's actually going to be a bit of an ordeal to try and get this cab uh, onto a trailer and um, taken away to get sandblasted. I mean, everything's possible, but uh, it just seems like such a big hassle to me. And the fourth reason is probably the most important one to me, and that is I kind of want to do it. Like, I, I want to dive into all the, the different parts of this cab and figure out how much rust is in there and work out the best way to, to treat it. Now, in previous videos, I've already shown you how little rust there is in Trixie's cab, so I'm very lucky in that respect. Um, it may be that I don't even need to take the cowl off. I haven't decided about that yet, but uh, from what I've seen up right inside these, these little corners, there really isn't any uh, flaky rust in there. It's all just light surface rust. Anyway, I'm going to have a crack at that. But yeah, that, that fourth reason is a big one for me. Um, this project is a hobby. It's something to learn and something to play with and something to have fun with and something to escape everyday life um, with. So. Yeah, I want to do the work and get in there and, and find out how to restore this cab all by myself. So I've started this stage, I guess by cleaning up, maybe I was procrastinating a little bit, figuring out which way I wanted to go with this. But cleaning up is probably not a bad first move. It sort of clears the mind a little bit too. I reckon there are probably about three stages to getting this floor pan finished. Probably four stages actually. I've already done the first stage, which is strip back all of the surface rust off the metal itself. But the stage I'm gonna go into, um, for this video at least, um, stage one, is to remove clips that I've forgotten about, uh, to dig out excess seam sealer, and well, I've already removed the goop from around where the steering column goes through the firewall. Uh, and also to scrub off all of this surface rust. There really isn't much in here. I reckon I won't have too much trouble doing that by hand at all. And in doing that, I think I'll also make the decision about where I take the KBS to. Do I just do the floor pan itself up to all of these seams? Around the front there, down the side, and up the back here. Or do I actually put the KBS a little bit further up, like maybe up the firewall, I don't know, maybe the underside of the plenum? That's yet to be decided. But then, of course, stage three is to put the KBS treatment on it, and there's three steps in that. There's a, a cleaning step, and then there's the rust blast step, which treats and um, kills all of the rust. And then the third step is the rust seal, which is the black coating that it'll be finished off with. Like I said, I already started um, step one, stripping away or scraping away goop and excess seam sealer. I'm going to finish that off now. So as I'm going through this first step of just uh, getting all of the seam sealer and, and stuff out of the cab as much as I can, uh, what I'm finding is that 
um, when I do get the seam sealer out, it's nice shiny metal underneath. I can't see any rust kind of sneaking its way out of these joins. Um, a lot of this is rust from the grinder when I was doing the floor. So when I clean that off, that'll look a lot better. There is some surface rust there. Um, but yeah, most of this stuff is just from uh, the grinding I've already done on the floor. But back to these, back, back to these seams, um, just pulling out some of that excess seam sealer as it's kind of boosted my confidence that really there isn't a lot of hidden rust in this cab, I don't think. This floor pan on the passenger side has uh, clearly been replaced. The, the only slight concern I'm having at this stage is, like this is all seam sealer, this black stuff. It was kind of welded in, kind of not welded in. But the seam sealing around this floor pan was done so well because I've already taken a big chunk of it off when I was um, stripping the floor. And wherever I take it off, it's shiny, clean metal underneath. Uh, I'm still kind of working my way through this little corner here. There's a lot of uh, seam sealer in there um, and it does look like there's some rust um, being revealed underneath that, but we'll see. Inside um, these little uh, holes beside the footwells, a lot of that looks like uh, just original seam sealer and it is just bulked, bulked in there. Um, same on the other side. Uh, I'll probably try and fish that out just to make sure there's nothing lurking deep down in those cavities. It's an odd angle, I know, uh, but I'm looking up at the underside of the plenum and thought uh, we should just record the, um, the condition of it before I start grinding away at the rust. So that's the passenger side air vent. It's really just got surface rust around there, um, a little bit of surface rust that's kind of formed from some water at some point um, flowing down to the inside of the cab and generally that all looks pretty nice. Um, the dash frame, still don't know what it's called, that's still what I'm calling it. That dash frame still got some surface rust here and there, but nothing frightening. On the underside of the cowl, there's surface rust. I uh, should be able to get to that without any trouble. I know a lot of you may be thinking right now just how much work I'm in for, and I appreciate that, even though I don't know how to quantify it yet. I don't mind. This is something I'm just gonna flow with. Uh, the steering column mount looks great. And that's the um, underside of the plenum still. Again, you can see uh, bits of light surface rust coming through, but there's nothing scary. And over to the driver's side. Same deal, light surface rust there. But honestly, nothing scary, nothing that's making me think um, I should be pulling everything apart and undoing spot welds, etc. I reckon I can nip everything in the bud and clean up everything I can reach. So, time to start grinding. Nowhere near finished grinding off all the surface rust inside the cab here, but I wanted to show you some progress. I picked what I thought was going to be pretty much the worst part of it, which is this corner. Um, I showed you before that I thought there might be some rust coming up through um, underneath the, the seam sealer. So what I've done is pick all of the seam sealer out wherever I can to get back to metal and just did a very light grind. And that looks pretty good to me. I reckon that'll clean up really well. Now, I'm getting out as much of the seam sealer as I can because my theory is that wherever I can reveal bare metal, I can treat it and nip it in the bud. Uh, there is plenty of seam sealer underneath this replacement floor pan. 
I think it um, it made the one of the previous owners, the welder, that they're not. They've just sealed it up so well with with seam sealer. So wherever I've picked that away, there is no rust underneath it, which is a good sign. That's a theory anyway. Um, time will tell. I've also had a go at taking some of the, the rust off this vent and with my big giant grinder it's really hard to get in here and do a, a good job but it, it is coming back to shiny metal for the most part so that's going to work. I just need to find a tool that's a little more dexterous than my grinder to get into all of these nooks and crannies. Again the surface rust that took a mere three seconds to grind that away to bare metal and as you can see there's no pitting there so it is really just very light for surface rust. So that's what I'll continue with. I just need to figure out what other tool I want to use to, um, to get the rest of this rust off the inside of the firewall and, and underneath the plenum. Reveal as much metal as I can and then be ready uh, to treat it all properly and seal it in like a time capsule where even if there is some rust left inside there, it can't breathe, it's mummified. I may have just blown up my drill, <laughs> this poor old thing. I don't think it overheated, but it's very old and it's, um, its life was limited. I was using an old strip disc uh, from when I did the floor. Just because of that smaller diameter, it kind of gets into the little curves a bit better, which is what I have been working on. Um, this corner kind of getting into all of these little curves, I guess, <laughs> with that to, uh, to get the, the paint off and any surface rust off. Uh, got up into the corner a little bit further. The surface rust is um, coming off very easily. And in all of these kind of curves <laughs> uh, and edges, um, I've been using the, the little, the drill with the, the little almost worn out strip disc. And I think I'm making pretty good progress, to be honest. That's probably, oh, maybe half an hour's work. I got across to here as well and was kind of playing with different angles. Do you like, can you see my cross hatching here? I think that's very nice. Um, it takes a little bit extra time to get the last bits of seam sealer off the metal because it just, it starts just by spreading it around and then it starts eating it off. Uh, that just takes a little bit of time. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this progress. I just need to really find another tool and then I'll be able to, to get further up, I think, into these tighter places and, and finish over there in the corner. But I don't think it's going to take too long to get all of the inside firewall and these uh, inside side um, panels um, stripped back uh, and ready for KBS. In case I haven't mentioned it already, I'm using the KBS chassis coder kit um, for, the, uh, for the floor. I'll probably use it again for the actual chassis, but that's for a later time. But the good thing about this, from what I understand, is that even if there is a little bit of surface rust left in places, like maybe up in um, the tight spots in the cab, like up in these gaps between the plenum and the firewall, for example. Even if I can't get all of the rust off them, there's no flaking rust in this cab. And I think the KBS um, rust blast can just be painted over any last bits of surface rust and it's going to, um, to do its job anyway. So I think we've got a good plan.
I've run out of batteries and I've run out of light, so the grinding for today has to come to an end. But here's what I've done. I got out the, um, the grinder again after blowing up my drill and went over all the areas that I could reach, which is not a lot. There's still a fair bit that I've got to uh, take off, but yeah, I'll probably come back with another different tool. But yeah, uh, I would say that we're 80% done. And that means there's only a little bit more to do before I actually start the third step of this um, floor process, which is getting the KBS out and treating, cleaning the metal, treating the metal and coating the metal. And that'll be great. 